Hello guys, today's video is for Poison Witch Doctor Man in the Jade. Poison Jade build, guys. And uh, it's very, very good. It's awesome. It's actually better than cold now. So uh, what we're using for this, guys, we're using the new Season 2 legendary called the Wormwood. It's, an, an, it's a legendary staff, man. I was so f happy when this for me drops because it's ancient and it drops absolutely top end. It's very, very good. Anyway, what does it do? Um, it casts Locust Swarm on a nearby enemy every second. So basically, you don't have to have Locust Swarm on your bar anymore. And you can replace it with one item of whatever you want. Uh, Mass Confusion Paranoia is fantastic for greater rifts. But you can pretty much put anything, man, anything you want. You can put like zombie dogs, rabid dogs. I use this sometimes on T6. You know, just as extra blockers. So it's up to you, man. But if you're doing great rest, Mesh Confusion Paranoia is the way to go. All right, so let's go for it, man. Like, like I said, Mesh Confusion Paranoia, an extra 20% additional damage for 12 seconds is fantastic. You know what I mean? It will blow shit up a lot quicker. On the right click, we've got Haunt Poison Spirit. Now, this is fantastic. Um, this is a new rune that was patched a couple of patches ago. Now it makes an extra 20% damage from all sources. So this is fantastic for him. You know, it really is good. So in group play, you know, it's going to be an extra 20% damage and of course for your own damage as well. So Horn Poison Spirit, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic spell. Uh, Soul Harvest Siphon. I'm using Siphon for the extra life. That's pretty much the only real choice there. You could take uh, Languish if you wanted to, but to be honest, you want the heal. Especially what you want the heal, man. So uh, it takes uh, Soul Harvest and a siphon that's the best one overall uh piranhas piranado as usual for the damage increasement and it box up all the enemies it sucks them all into one big go also procs your strong arm braces so they can give you up to an extra 30 percent damage on top plus an extra 15 so 45 percent damage in one click is a big deal <laughs> it's a big deal man so you just you just cast this just as you harvest man and they're both a little bit shit up and boom i know i know the booms are back <laughs> Okay, uh, Spirit Walk Jaunt, guys. As usual, just the usual uh, movement speed CC breaker. Three seconds of damage immunity is fantastic. Uh, I'm using Horrifier Stalker because I like the extra movement speed. This will also lock down enemies for three seconds while you're near them. Uh, another thing you could use if you want to, if you're a bit squishy, is Frightening Aspect. So you get that additional 35% armor. But personally, I like the movement speed. I like that 20% movement speed. You know, you can zip around extremely quickly. It's great. Okay, uh, passives, as usual, Spirit Vessel self res also takes two seconds of Horrify, Spirit Walk, and Soul Harvest, you know, so straight away, it's fantastic, you know, this is a must. Grave Injustice, as you're killing enemies, you get an extra cooldown per enemy within 20 yard radius, also heals your mana and your life. Uh, Creeping Death, this makes all your DOTs last five minutes, this is on the passives because that way, when you consume your dots with the Jade Harvester build, it does enormous amounts of damage, so that's why it's here. And last of the course, but not least, is Pierce the Whale, for that just flat out 20% damage increase. Lovely. Right, let's look at gear then. Like I said earlier, we're using the new legendary uh, Wormwood Staff on Season 2, which is fantastic. Uh, Jade Harvester Boots, guys. You want Int Vet, All Res Armor. Uh, on the legs again, Int Vet Armor, Double Sockets. Unfortunately, my secondary is on this suck a bit, because, you know, I'm still farming, man, but you want La Half to kill really there and things like that. Uh, first ring, guys, of course, is Unity. You know what I mean? I finally got Unity at long last, so you just want to sock it on there and as high CC and elite damage as possible. The first gem we're using is the Gem of Ephesius Toxin. And uh, it puts big fat, big fat DRT on the enemy, which you can can consume with the Jade Harvester build as well. And on the, as you get, it's, it's a level 25 as well. Gives you an extra 10% increased damage on top. So this is a must, basically, for Jade Harvester build. Uh, the belt I'm using is the Vigilante belt. I was quite happy when I found this belt, actually, because it was an ancient one. I was like, yeah, fucking ancient! But more importantly, it's got 8% cooldown on it, which is fantastic. And the secondaries are good as well with the life after kill, so this is great. So you get an extra bit of cooldown there, it helps a lot. It does help a lot. Okay, and the other ring, of course, is the Royal Ring Granger, a must for the build. Um, gives you a set, a set bonus item there. And uh, I've got a socket on this thing with CC. Oh, not CC, sorry, attack speed to CHD. And the gem we're using is Bane of the Trapped. So increased damage under impairing effects. So when you're basically casting Haunt, it will slow them. Even the Poison Rune Spirit will snare them and do the extra 28.5 DPS damage at the moment at rank 45. So it's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely. Uh, so we've got Jade Harvest Gloves here, Intel, CHD, CC, and of course, cooldown reduction. It's all about cooldown reduction on this build. Um, unfortunately, I don't have cooldown reduction on my shoulders yet because I'm still hunting down another piece. But once I do get that, I'll probably change my belt to Witch and Arrow or something like that. And that'd be enough. That'd be enough cooldown. So basically, guys, Invit, cooldown, Haunt, man. That's what you want on your shoulders. I'm still hunting the, the better shoulders. Uh, chest plate, pretty easy. Invit, Haunt, triple sockets, man. Preferably with Laugh After Kill. 
on the, on the second there. You want a Quetzal Coat of Guys with a socket, crit, main stat, and of course Vitality. Unfortunately, I don't have the Vital one here. And of course, you want the big fat diamond in there for that extra 12.5% K, um, the, 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 the cooldown reduction. Lovely. Uh, on the amulet, I'm using squirts, man, but pretty much any amulet you want. Health out amulet would be optimal, though, with when your current passives. That way, you can squeeze in gruesome feet, so even more DPS. But uh, just make sure it's got CC, CHD, main stat, and a socket. And the gem I'm using, guys, is a Gogok or Swiftner. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange. Why the hell are you using a Gogok or Swiftness? As I'm spamming um, my haunts and stuff, and even when it leaps to the next target, it will give me that extra stack. And as you see there, on the, um, the level 25 bonus there, gain 1% cooldown reduction per stack of Swiftness. So you can pretty much keep this up all the time and let you soul harvest a lot more often. And therefore, you do a lot more damage in the build. Brilliant. Uh, and of course, we're using poison strong arm braces. Like I said earlier, we put a prana nado here. You just cast this. As the mobs get sucked in, it will proc the uh, the strong arm braces up to well, minor 26. We can get this up to 30. percent So I'm still on the hunt for better braces as well. And there you go. So uh, let me quickly explain how Jade Harvester set works. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the set bonuses. So two six gives five intelligence, uh, mana regen for four set, and the six set soul harvest consume your damage over time. Effect on enemies instantly dealing their damage. So basically, when you put loads and loads of DOTs on the mobs and of course pestilence will be coming off the snooze staff as well you basically hit soul harvest it consumes all your damage in one giant boom it goes boom it blows the living shit over man all the bits and limbs go flying through the air and it's very very fun so just make sure you've got quetzalcoatl of course with the set and creeping death and it just lets makes all that damage go off in one big one big fell swoop so let's go into a quick t6 riff now we're showing action and it's very very fun I will firstly show you Wormwood, man, because Wormwood is brilliant. Wormwood is really, really good now. I don't think it's a Furnace beta, but I've already cleared Great Rift uh, 39. I'm currently 343 in the EU, which ain't too bad, I guess. But um, yeah, so you can, look, you can just see all these you know, T's casted from the staff. And just. Oh, well, I lagged on, had a bit of lag there. And you can see that just the DRT just on TS T6, man, is enough just to kill everything, man. Like, so if I, I'm not actually casting no spell. This is just the Pestilence staff proccing right now. Just bring them all in and BOOM! Look at that shit in the fucking t It's fucking crazy, man. There's a little cheeky chest there. We've got any in there. Oh, I need these blues, man. Can we have the blues? Oh, let's pop down there. We'll see if we can find an elite pack. There's a few feathers down there. So yeah, when you start using uh, Poison Haunt now, I'm using a bit of Poison Haunt. This is when the damage gets big. You know I mean, you can see it's just jumping to the other targets. And to be honest, I don't even even In T6, you don't even need to harvest most of the time. Because the, the raw damage of the DOTs will be enough just to kill most things. Look, let's just look. Look, boom, boom, tick, 20 mil, 20 mil, 20 mil. For T6, you don't have to use Gokok or Swiftless here. You don't have to use this. You can use uh, Bay of the Powerful. As you kill an Elite Pack, you have that extra damage for X amount of seconds, which is fantastic. So you can use that instead of Gogok. I I'm just used to Gogok now. You know, I mean? I'm used to it, using it now because uh, I love that extra, uh, extra cooldown reduction. All right, we've got an Elite Pack now, so let's mass confuse them. We'll suck them all in. They're not all together, unfortunately, but you can see the damage, it just wrecks them. Just always spam Haunt. You always want to spam Haunt with Gogok, because it's always going to produce, as it hits a target, that extra cooldown reduction. Especially in Greater Rifts, you know what I mean? That is key in Greater Rifts. Bam. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, there's one, one sword. There's always one, man, that doesn't get dotted. There we go. I did it a bit too quick, but I did it a little bit too quick. But, you know, just make sure your, all your dots, you know, your, your DOTs apply and... Uh, yeah, blow the living shit out of him, man. Let's pop over here. Not much density on this one, though, unfortunately. Bam! Oh, cheeky axe. We'll rob that shit up. We'll blow it up. It's a piece of shit, though. Alright, we've got all these guys to turn up. BAM! Fucking get blown up, you bastards. It's always spam. Your, your poison horn all the time because that way you're just bringing up these stacks here all the time. It's just nice. It is just gravy, man. Boom! Nice. Like I said, man, it doesn't have that like super punch of um, furnace, man, for great riffs and shit. But it is very, very good for trash, though. Wormwood is very, very good. For trash. Like I said, in the beginning of this video, like I said, you don't have to use wormwood for this build. This poison build. You can just use a furnace and just change mass confusion to Locust Storm Pestilence. You can just put it like that, and that will be absolutely fine. Because we're using World Wide, we don't have to use this, you know what I mean? So we have an open slot here, which is kind of nice. So you can put anything you want there. You could even put a fucking slam dance in there if you really wanted to. You know what I mean? You can even put that in there. 
What I like about this build though, it's nice and mobile as well. You know, I can hit Spirit Walk, I can hit the rest of my stuff, and I just zip around really quick. It's very, very nice. Bam! There we go. And they're fucking dead. Pick that shit up. But most of the time, though, when you're just doing trash on this build with Wormwood on T6, you don't even need to cast Haunt. You don't even have to cast it. You can just literally just walk up to the mobs and just use that. Just use that, that DOT. And that's normally enough. Oh, that was good, man. Oh, you just survived with just a, a touch of damage, right? A touch, you bastard. But it's very, very good, man. It's a very nice build. I like it a lot, actually. Let's take these fellas down here. Boom, boom, boom. Bam! Right, they're dead. What about you guys? You want some as well? Boom! You're fucking dead as well! What the fuck? <laughs> it's fun as fuck, man. I'm not normally a massive Jade player, to be honest. I normally like playing Pet, but ever since I've been playing with Wormwood, the build has grown on me. You know what I mean? I'm a lazy player. You know what I mean? I'm a lazy fucking player. I don't like clicking on too much shit. Because I'm old and shit now, guys. I'm fucking old, but... You know what I mean, this is this is fun. This is fun though. Remember you guys you can use ho your horrify stalker here. Remember, it, it will mobilize them for three seconds as well, so look, go up to these guys, they're stuck for a little while. And boom, they're dead. Lovely! Gotta pick up this death breath, man, because I've been trying to upgrade my craftish stuff on my dock for my pet build recently. Boom. And you can see it just fucking trashes. Unfortunately, we don't have the best density rift here. Normally, if the, if the density is really, really good. Oh, hello, little fella! Hello. Uh, switch out the crown here quickly, because I, I need to make sure... Uh, I need to make sure fucking the gems here. Boom! You little... Little, little bastard. Oh, I think, Gives those extra topaz. It's lovely, lovely. Always left this little fucking sack, poor bastard. <laughs> I'll zoom out very quick. I mean, it's nice, though. It's a good build, man. It's a good build. Like I said earlier, though, I don't think it's a Furno Speeder, but it is good. It's a very good weapon. Yeah, you know, I was really, really lucky to get this thing roll unbelievably well. And uh, it's really helped me on uh, Season 2. You just think the poison itself is just strong as fuck, you know what I mean? It is strong as fuck. And the way it's autocasting all the time, you know, it's autocasting all the time. It's just free damage, you know what I mean? So you can put anything here, you know what I mean? You can put absolutely anything you want. You know what I mean? Slam nuts would have been a bad idea to me, honest. Keep that for a rift guardian on a great fucking rift or something. But I do think probably mass confusion paranoia is probably the best way to go. Like I say, if you don't feel too confident on your jade dock and you're dying a lot, you know what I mean? You can put on like rabid dogs here, for instance, as well. You can pop, pop this on and have a bit of off tanking so that it holds up all the mobs. Um, you know, there's loads of options. You could have water zombies wrecking crew. You'd have a taunt wall in there as well. You know, it's very, very nice. Bam. Like I said earlier, you don't even have to harvest on T6. You know, it just the, just the DOTs themselves would be more than enough damage just to kill everything. Oh, actually, I did go through a Paragon points today. Uh, second call, guys, was just cap your movement speed and intelligence and offense. You want to start, of course, with cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction is key to the build. Then CHD, CC, then attack speed. In defense, start off with armor, life percent, all res, then life regen. And life on hit. Area damage and then whatever last do you want. Resource concentration would be okay, a bit better in J because there is a bit of cost reduction with Horn and uh, Prolene differences. So resource concentration first, then gold fine, man. Okay, so stats I'm using at the moment, man. Uh, I've only got 13 elite damage because of the unity. Like I said, though, you can put in this, you can put in Bay of the Powerful here for the extra 50% on top if you want to. Um, crit chance is 41, 40, 43 CHD. Poison is 42%. Haunt damage at the moment is 29%. Cooldown reduction is, where was my CDR? Uh, there is 33.33%. That's actually fairly high and pretty, and pretty like mid range, man, for a Jade Harvest. But pretty much, guys, the more, you know, the more fucking uh, cooldown reduction you got, the more harvest you can do. And, uh, you know what I mean? You're just going to wreck it up. You know what I mean? You're just going to wreck it up. Now we finally get a map with some density at long last. Just remember to cycle your Prolonado and your Horrify all the time, because it will just lock down the mobs so you can do that dirty damage when you get up close to them and just fucking wreck them in the face. <laughs> Boom. You can just see that. And it's got, you know, like I said earlier, it's got lots and lots of nice movement speed as well. It's got lots of nice movement speed. Look, because we're refreshing so quick because of... Uh, GI on the passive. You know, I mean, we can just cycle our stuff very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. 
Just suck them all up and then detonate. Boom, you fuckers! There's always one left, man. So when we got one guy like this, just spam your haunt like crazy. And you get 15 seconds of cooldown, and then you just fucking harvest. This is why I prefer Gogok over, uh... Gogok over, uh... Fucking Bane of the Powerful, even for T6. It's up to you guys, you know, it's up to you. If you, if you just want to dot stuff and just leave it, then, uh, Bane of the Powerful will be better. I just watch it just die. <laughs> There's one elite pack, man. Bam. There we go, guys. Almost done now. Just kill this last fella. But remember, guys. But just before you go to harvest, always do drop the spirit, uh, the uh, the prononado first, so it amplifies your damage a lot. Okay. And there you go, man. Boom. Absolutely wrecks fucking face. It's a great build, guys. The poison version of this build is a lot more fun. Then play it with Furnos, man, because oh, well, you'd have to cast the Locus one, you'd have to cast the other shit, the other shit. You know, this this stuff just makes it so much more fun to play. Like I said, I know I'm not a massive Jade Harvester fan, but this will make you go boom, boom, boom! It makes you play boom the fucking shit out of it, man. It's very, very good. Very good. And there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. This is Poison Jade Harvester build for Season 2 using the Ancient Wormwood, man. This thing rolls sick as well. It's really good. Really good. Anyway, guys, as usual, guys, please like and subscribe. If you've got any comments below, just check them down there. And I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Goodbye, man. Have fun in Sanctuary. Ah, boom!